Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. And I'm your presenter, Paul Sheriff. And we are down to the final two episodes of our series on building apps with XAML and .NET MAUI. Past few episodes, we took a look at some kind of more advanced coding type issues, MVVM, dependency injection, commanding, uh, really great stuff. Now we're going to spend the last couple episodes going back to the UI and fixing up the app. So Paul, what are we going to look at today? Yeah, what we're going to do right now is take a look at building a list of user data. And so we'll get that all working, show you some different ways you present lists. And then the next episode will be how to navigate then from the list back to that detail view. So, all right. Yeah, cool. let's dive in and get this going. So first thing we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to go back to our user view model. And we're going to add a private variable here that is going to be used to present our list of data. So an observable collection of user objects, and we're going to call it user list. So add a nice little public property here called user list. And that's what we'll then bind to, to one of these list controls that we're going to take a look at. And then if you remember, I had down here a get method that didn't do anything. But you can see it's going to return a reserve observable collection of user objects. Mm -hmm. So we need to write a little bit of code to do that. So we're going to first check and make sure that our repository is not equal to null. And then we'll make the call to our repository.get and turn that into a new observable collection of user objects and store that into our user list property, which will then inform the you know, UI that, hey, we've got a new collection of data here, please display it. So let's go back to our views folder here and let's add a new item. Go to .NET MAUI. We're going to create a new .NET MAUI content page. Make sure you're using the XAML version of that. And we'll call it user list view. All right, inside of here, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an XML namespace. And we're going to use our view model here. It'll be our adventureworks.maui.command classes. Mm -hmm. We're going to use our data type here. Okay, so we're going to do our data type as our user view model commands. There we go. And I'm also going to bring in another namespace and that's going to be to the adventure works entity layer and i'll show you why in just a minute but we're going to need this as well okay so i think i've got everything oh no nope. we need our partial too how about that xml namespace partial it's here and that's adventure works dot use partial because we want to use our header again remember our reusable guy yeah all right so let's replace this whole vertical stack layout here. And we'll put in a border. And that has our style that we've been using. Okay, we've got a grid here, and you can see that I've got basically two rows. One is auto height, and this is our view header, so user list, the list of users in the system. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, this is where we're using asterisk now, which says, so the auto for the first one says use whatever it takes for that header. But after that, let's go ahead and just use the rest of the page, right? This bigger, bigger row that takes up whatever the list view needs. So this is a list view. And this list view, his job is to display a repeating list of data. And we do that by binding up to a user list property. Right, so we added that already. That's an observable collection of user objects that we added to our view model. And then the list view item template. Inside of here, we create what's called a data template. And look at this X data type model colon user. Now you see where this guy came in. Because each element that's being displayed in this data template is of the type user. Because remember, we're binding to the user list, which is a, a collection of user objects. Mm -hmm. By specifying the X data type here, we again get IntelliSense. So I could first name, I could last name, you know, or what I was doing here was simply last name, first name. If you remember, I had created that as a read-only 
last name plus a comma plus first name. Okay, so there we go. Very simple list view. Now let's go ahead and write the appropriate code then to actually make this work. All right. So again, I'm going to take advantage of dependency injection. I'm going to have it inject my user view model commands. There's our view model that's going to get set now to our view model. And in the on appearing, I'm writing basically the same code we saw before. I'm binding the context for this page to the view model. And then I'm calling now the get method. That's the one that goes and gets all of the list of users. All right. So if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to run this. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. What did I forget? I forgot some stuff. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So let's um, go back here. And let's. Uh, do, do, do. Huh. Okay. Sorry about that. I totally forgot. Yeah, that's that's what I need to do. One more thing. I knew there was one more thing I had to do. Remember how we added the scope so that we had the detail view? I also need to include the list view now, right? Right. Okay, because I'm injecting into that code behind, right? So pretty easy. All right, so now we've got that. Now let's try this out because we should be able to get the data in there uh, by the get here, and then it should bind up to our list view. Click there, bring up our user. There it is. Yeah, it is. I'm a first. All right now, it doesn't look great. <laughs> okay, um, you know what can we do to make this look a little bit better? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked. Let's go ahead, come back over here. I'm going to show you this, and we'll go back over to my XAML. So this view cell right here, we can do whatever we want to in this view cell. Okay. I want to make it a little bit larger, but you'll notice this is one of those ones that again does not refresh. Okay, the hot reload will not take care of this. It's got to redo the whole list. So unfortunately, this is one you got to stop and restart. So what have I done? Well, in this view cell, I said, well, give me a frame with a margin and a padding. And then I'm going to have a vertical stack layout. And I'm going to be made up of three horizontal stack layouts where I've got a label with the last name, first name, another label with email, and then binding to the email, and then another one with an edit and a delete button. Okay. Okay, this could be cool. Yeah, there we go. Ah, there Ooh, we go. much better. Yeah. yeah. So this is, to me, the beauty of XAML, just like HTML. Well, you can just express yourself however you want inside of mm -hmm. these lists, you know. So, you know, put the nice, the most important stuff, put that in a little bit bold, right? So I did a font attribute of bold here and a font size of title. So that gives us a little bit larger. And then, you know, whatever else, other data you want to be in here, you don't have to have it as pronounced. So. Right. All right. So there we go, user list, right? So we've done that one. So basically it was replacing, you know, we had that one that just simply navigated to the other guy. We replaced it with this nice list. Let's do another one. Let's do this, because I want to give you guys as many examples as I can. Let's have another class in the view model layer called product view model. Okay, so now let's get a, a view model working for products. And let's bring in some code here. Again, I'm going to write all of this. So it's going to copy some of this in here. But it looks very similar to the user view model that I had before. I inherit from the view model base. I've got a couple of constructors. I'm having to inject a repository, a product repository. Uh, we're going to have a collection of products here in a you know, observable collection. We've created the appropriate public properties, a product object for a single product in the observable collection product list for the collection of them. I've got my get method that checks to make sure the repository is not equal to null. It then calls the get method on that to build that list. And then we turn that into an observable collection. And of course, then I have the get 
where I go and get just a single item from the repository or I return mock data if it doesn't find anything. Now, if we mm-hmm. save, I haven't done anything at this point, so we don't really need anything at that point. Then, if you remember, I need to do the same thing up here where I create another class called product view model commands. And inside of here, we're going to inherit from our product view model. So we get all of the same things. I don't really have any commands that I'm going to do at this point, but again, I'm trying to keep things consistent. If I've got a view model down there, a view model layer, I want to have a view model commands class up here in the MAUI so I can add additional commands as I need them. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because for the user list view, I actually used a list view control. And the reason that I wanted to do a product list view now is because I want to show a collection view. I'm trying to give you an example of a few different uh, collections that you can use. So I'm going to again create another content page. It'll be product list view. And then I'm going to change some things about this by adding in some XML namespaces, the partial, the view model, and the model. Okay. And set the X data type. Okay, equal to product view model commands, okay, just like we did. So it's, you can see, once you get the pattern down, this becomes pretty easy. Yeah. It? Yep. It's all about patterns. That's what I think. All right. Now, same thing. I've got a border. I've got a grid. I've got my header view. And then I've got now a collection view instead of a list. Now. You'll still see it's it's an item template, it's a data template. What's the difference between a list view and a collection? Well, not a lot. They actually both inherit from items view. Um, and then they say that collection view, however, is more performant than a list view. So I'm not 100% sure why they don't expand on it at all. <laughs> so, um, but they just say to use collection view most often. So that's what yeah. I'm but if you look at them, they look very similar, don't they? You see this one here, collection view, item template, data template. And if we go over here, list view, list view, item template, data template. This one right. has a view cell. Okay, so the uh, collection view does not. Okay. As you can see, I'm still using a frame, and then I'm using a vertical stack layout, and I'm, you know, still got my buttons here. So I've got all of the kind of the same things. But one thing I'm going to show you here, though, that's a little different for list price. I'm adding on string format because I want it to be displayed as currency. Right. So part of the binding object, it allows you to pass in a formatter. And so I'm just using this is just, you know, typical .NET formatting stuff, right? So right. you know, you do zero colon D for days, <coughs> but zero colon C is currency. So there we go. All right. Let's go to the code behind here. And let's, and the same thing. We're going to inject through dependency injection a product view model commands. So that's our private read only view model that we're doing here. We're setting it from the injection. And then we do the on appearing and binding and getting. So once you get the pattern down, this becomes really simple. Let's now go into app shell. And where before I was calling product detail view, let's change this to call our product list view now. Okay. And then. One last thing to do here, and that is we now need to add all the things that we just did there, add them to our BI services. So I repository product and product repository is the implementation of it. Product view model commands, just like this one, product detail view and product list view. Pretty simple, right? Yep. Okay. And again, I would you know highly suggest that you create an interface for your view models as well. You know, that way you can really use an interface and, and use dependency injection correctly. I just didn't do it here. But let's try it out and make sure I did everything correctly. <laughs> and then we'll have a couple of lists. We'll have the user list and we'll have the product list. Now we still have the user detail and the product detail, right? So somehow we then still need to navigate from the list from each of the lists to the details, okay? But here's the product view. 
there we go. I forgot to yeah. probably put a little more margin around that, but you get the idea. And I kind of use yep. the same pattern. So we now have two list views. We now need just to be able to click on this edit button and navigate to the detail. And that's coming next. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> So we're really making good progress on this. Uh, one question for you, go back to the UI okay. uh, for the user list, for example, uh, in the collection view. Collection view, that's the product list, okay. Yeah, so you're using vertical stack layout, horizontal stack layout. I've seen and have used myself before, putting that, using that all in a grid. So. Yep. Do you have one preference for one over the other? Not really. Um, I think for this particular layout, I could have done either. Okay. Um, don't think it really matters. Okay. Um, the only caveat I would put on that is how much you're going to put into here. And the reason why is you might even want to change this top guy here as a flex layout. Okay. Because again, you got to consider screen size. Right. You know, how long is that name of a product? Is it too long? Now, it'll generally let wrap anyway, but mm -hmm. if you're adding more and more stuff out, because again, when you start using grids, people have a tendency to want to add more columns. And right. columns are the issue when we have smaller screen sizes. So I try to do everything with flex and horizontal and vertical uh, lay stack layouts. That's, that's just yeah. my preference. Right. I think it's just a little bit more responsive design, if you will, right? Yep. So great question. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. So in our next episode, we'll see how to get from the list to the detail. And so we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.